Hello, Julie from Technique Tuesday here. Today I'm using Distressed Inks to paint the Happy Hydrangea Flower from the Greenhouse Society Collection. I stamped the hydrangea on Canson water watercolor paper, including one each of the loose flowers, uh, using a quick drying waterproof ink. I'm using a large acrylic block as my palette, but you can use a craft mat or a plastic plate or some other non-porous washable surface. Just open your ink pad and wipe the pad down on your palette surface. Do this for each of your colors. I made sure I got more ink for the colors I knew I was going to use more. Uh, of course, I didn't need quite this much for this product project, but I tend to go overboard so I don't have to start, stop partway through. The first step of the painting is to add a clean water wash over the area you're going to be painting. Here I've applied the wash a little at a time. Water on a few flowers and then apply my color, uh, Mermaid Lagoon in this case, uh, to those, color, those flowers before I repeat the process on the next few flowers. Sometimes I forget to add the wash, which isn't the end of the world, but the wash really does help to make the final project product smoother. When I'm using a water brush pen with paint or inks that are water soluble like I am here, I'll often squeeze a blob of water onto my work surface or on my palette so that I have a bit of extra water when I need it. I find that sometimes either the water isn't flowing as well as I'd like, or the paper is soaking it up faster than I expected. It's also nice to be able to thin the color out a little bit if I've picked up a really concentrated brush full of it. I'm adding the blue to the insides of the flowers, fading it out to white about halfway out. Once I've got all the blue in, I repeat the process with the purple, wilted violet in this case, with the color at the out darkest at the outside edge and fading into the blue. I'll go back and forth with more blue, a bit of extra purple, and some of a medium color, in this case shaded lilac, to intensify the colors until I'm happy with them. Next, of course, are the flower centers and leaves. I just put a tiny bit of yellow, in this case it's fossilized amber, in the center of the flowers, and then I add a little bit to the leaves for a warm tint. Remembering to do my water wash was hard here, and when you see the green ribs I put in, you'll see the benefits of the water wash. I got excited about putting the mo in the mo lawn I used for green, and because I didn't do the wash, and then moved on to the next leaf before finishing the center leaf, I ended up with a very defined ribs. And of course, that can be good if that's what you're looking for. However, it's not the look I'm looking for. The water wash would have helped keep that area moister so that when I went back in, I'd have a better time smoothing out the color. A water wash will also help the paint sort of flow by itself, and if, which provides the fade without having to mess with it so much. I like to have a couple of different greens in my leaves, so I'm putting in some evergreen bough before adding just a little bit more yellow.
and here's my finished painting. I did a couple of other versions and made cards out of them. On this one I used a bright pink, festive berries, with a couple of purples, seedless preserved and wilted violet, to match the hydrangea plant in my mom's backyard. It's a bright pink. The second card features the same palette that I used in this video. I die cut the flowers out and used the little individual flowers as dimensional accents. As you can see, I stamped a whole bunch of the little flowers on one piece of paper so I could play around with how the colors work together. It was a nice way to test my ideas. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you saw something you can use on your next project.